Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus on cardiac lecture number 21, CAD arteriosclerosis, to pave the way to an MI. From this sticky note, the differences between arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis found on Facebook, Nursing Camp, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and nursingcamp.com. All right, so let's get going. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is to pave the way for an MI. And to pave the way was what I covered in my previous lectures on all reasons why a person will have an MI. There could be tissue problems, which means there's an actual structural problem with the tissue. It could be from an MI. It could be from hypertrophy or uh, cardiomyopathy, uh, where there's a floppy heart. And see those lectures where I differentiate between the two. The problem could be outside the heart, uh, like tamponade or trauma. Um, the other problem could be a pumping problem, where the heart is just isn't pumping. There's not enough cardiac output. And that's because of previous damage or there's actually modeling going on. There's a problem with the heart. The other one is um, A, is the arteries. There's an actual problem with the arteries, which is the, this is the problem that we're talking about with um, coronary artery disease. It's the problem with the vessels. Um, v is for valves. There's a problem in the valves. Try pulling my aorta. Um, there's a problem with regurg or stenosis or something like that, or electricity. And there's an actual problem with the, the electrical problem. So whenever you're thinking about cardiovascular disease or cardiac problems, it's generally these um, six areas that there's a problem underlying cause. So we say cardiovascular disease happens from either smoking, you know, cigarettes, um, being overweight, um, exercise, um, not exercising, just sitting around, and um, also some conditions like uh, sugar, you know, diabetes or hypertension. And there's also, those are modifiable factors. However, non-modifiable factors like your hereditary, your, your parents, you know, your immediate parents, immediate siblings. Um, so choose your parents wisely. Okay, so the next thing is, um, let's get into uh, what it is. So we talked about in the previous one, we talked about how atherosclerosis is at the wall. And when we look at the coronary arteries right here, we're looking at this. And this wall is build up. And we said that that damage happens. And sometimes the LDLs, lousy, bad, and the triglycerides um, start to bind to the sides of these walls. And they become very sticky. Well, the HDL is good, happy, you know. Um, we want that high because they come around and they clean this off and so that the person doesn't have an MI. But because they're sedentary or they're smoking or the damage or they're not changing their diet and their cholesterol is all high, over time this, the stickiness actually starts to harden. That's atherosclerosis at the wall. But arteriosclerosis is the problem with generally the stretch. And what happens is you actually get these on the tissue on the vessels, there's an actual problem inside the layers. So they're actually broken down and you get these kind of um, striations in it, okay? And what I think about when I think about this, you think of a balloon and you blow up a balloon and, um, and then you leave it in the corner and the next day, it's kind of flat. And that balloon gets these little striations in it. Well, that's kind of arteriosclerosis. The problem is, is they start to harden. And once they start to harden the vessels, they can't stretch. And that is arteriosclerosis. Because they can't stretch. And the problem is that in the heart, when you have a coronary arteries surrounding the ventricle, and it's breaking down, and the coronary arteries around the heart, it needs to feed this ventricle so it can pump O2. Well, when you have coronary artery disease um, and you start to exercise, what happens is, is those vessels want to vasodilate. So 
to meet the demand of O2. Well, with arteriosclerosis, they can't stretch. And so what happens is they can't meet the demand below. And then what happens is, is that um, these cells down here start to get starved for oxygen. And once they get starved for oxygen, you start to see chest pain and leading to MI. And that chest pain can be intermittent. So a lot of times patients with um, chronic stable angina, they have intermittent chest pain only with exercise. And then they start moving and then they stop and then the chest pain goes away because the demand isn't there anymore. So what do you do? So that's usually the, they're on their way to getting an MI. So usually what happens, a patient presents with uh, chest pain and when they present with chest pain, um, ST depression. That means that the cells are da down low of O2, okay? That's a problem. ST elevation is infarction. We cover that in another lecture, not important right now, but ST depression means that there's a, it's called ischemia, or means cells are, cells are dying, that they're being starved of oxygen. All right, so um, now when a patient has chest pain, they come into the hospital, and um, they might not have chest pain right now, and that's called HONA MB, and we'll talk about that in another lecture when we get closer to MI. Um, but right now we're gonna talk about um, what do we do for this, arteriosclerosis? Well, um, when we're looking at arteriosclerosis, we run through, is it acute or is it chronic? Well, it's generally chronic and you usually see it becoming acute when you start to have chest pain. So they have episodes. When they have episodes, they come into the hospital. And so chest pain is always, always important. Because if they don't treat it, you know, they can have a heart attack. And um, that could be a problem. So it's, it's chronic. Um, we evaluate. So how do we know what's happening? Well, we talked about this in the previous lecture, calcium deposits. Do a calcium study. We might do a cabbage um, to look at the coronary arteries, which is another lecture, um, to see what the problem is. Um, so how does it start? Well, we talked about that. We talked about... It generally starts from um, a buildup of cholesterol at the, at the vessels and also through diet, exercise, and sedentary, and smoking, and diabetes, and all those problems. Um, if you don't treat those problems, then therefore you have a higher risk for coronary artery disease. What are some labs? Well, some labs are as a general screening, we do a total cholesterol. See my next lecture where I'll cover these, this, um, these labs. 200 then triglycerides which is also 200 we want less than ldls we want less than 150 and then um hdls we want greater than 50. there's also some other ones like a, a crp i'll cover that and also uh, an east s red rate all right uh eating well low fat diet low cholesterol low saturated fats what's the assessment of a patient well the the A, the assessment, is that they generally are asymptomatic until they have chest pain. And that chest pain is, is acute. And they need to be evaluated. Next is um, prescriptions. What do we give? Well, we'll try diet modifications first. Um, unless they're having chest pain, then we are going to do a HONA MB, which is nitro, oxygen, aspirin, morphine, and beta blockers. Um, P... Well, there are prescriptions, statins, they might start on statins, protocol, anything to help uh, antilipidemics to lower cholesterol. Uh, procedures, what's some procedures? Well, arteriosclerosis is procedures of uh, cabbage. You might have a calcium study uh, to evaluate calcium deposits. And um, so what stands out? Uh, what stands out most important with arteriosclerosis is more the stretch. It doesn't stretch, so they have more illicit signs and symptoms of uh, chest pain with this. Where atherosclerosis, the, the risk is rupturing of plaques and there's a blockage. With arteriosclerosis, is more the stretch. 
Um, that's a general overview. Uh, my name is Camp from nursingcamp.com. These are my sticky notes where I'm covering um, cardiac, and I can be found at Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, Twitter, and nursingcamp.com. That's it. Now nurse on.